Hello everyone, let's continue our discussion on various kinds of setup and hold analysis. So what we'll do, we'll try to modify this circuitry in such a fashion to include more and more number of checks. Okay, to start with, we'll, we'll look into this combinational logic and we'll try to replace that logic with an AND gate. Okay, the same thing that we did in the clock path just to save some amount of power in the clock path, we'll do the same thing to save some amount of power in the reset path as well. And how, how will this work? Let's say we have two signals, let's say one is the control signal and one is the A signal. So whenever the control signal sees a high pulse, the gate is open. So either a logic 1 or logic 0, whatever is present at the, at the A input will pass on to the capture flop and the flop will get resetted or setted based on the value of the A signal. So this is how you control your gating gating logic so in this way you can actually save some amount of leakage power with that said let's say there is another another specifications that comes which which says that the a and the control signal should be in sync they should be synchronous okay so to to get them into a synchronous level we need to treat them or we need to time them in such a fashion that there is some relationship between a and control and as a result of that you want a and control to be the end points so for example in the past videos we have looked at, at endpoints and we, we defined endpoints only at the output port or the D pin of the capture flop. So in this case if you want this pins to behave as a D pin or an output port or any endpoint we need to do some special kinds of checks and those are called as data to data checks. So, so we need to set some constraints and, and I'll talk about the constraints when we move into the constraint course. We need to set some data to data checks on the A and the control pin and when, once you do that the A and the control pin will behave as an end point and you will find some multiple timing paths coming to the A and the control pin something like this so you will have two timing paths one path which is from the another clock pin to the control pin and another timing path from the clock pin to the uh, to the A pin so this A and control pin will behave as end points just as the D pin and the output port and then you can do some timing checks so the, so the so the requirement could be something like this they want the a signal or, or the set or the reset pulse to come after certain after, after certain time when the control edge comes so that kind of requirement can be used or can be satisfied by this by by the kind of checks that we are talking about and we need some special constraints to enable that which we'll be talking about when we enter deep detail into this particular course this kind of checks are the checks between the data signals this, since this is the a signal this is a pulse is a data pulse the control pulse or the control signal is again a data signal so a check between two data signal is referred to as data to data check and there are there are checks which, which are which are included as a part of setup and hold analysis okay it's just categorized separately because this is a different from from all others the all others were dependent on some flops except the clock gating they were all dependent on certain endpoints as being a flop in this case the endpoint is not a flop but it's an input of the gate Okay, so this kind of checks also are categorized as data to data check and, 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 and as and when we enter deep into the course I'll provide some more examples of data to data check okay so the, the, with that said let's move into another category so another category of timing is the latch timing we have looked into flops we have looked into edge triggered flops of, and when we when we say edge triggered flops basically this launch flop or this kind of flops will become transparent on the edge of the clock signal but there are certain special kind of flops that becomes transparent on the level of the on, on the level of the signal let's look into that first try to let us build the circuitry over here we'll bring a latch in 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 between then there is one more flop that we introduced over here okay and with the latch and the flop we also add some clock pulses so let's say we give the clock to the latch from this clock and the same clock also goes to the flip flop okay so the major difference that we see from the that, that we see from this flop and this latch is is the behavior or the way they trigger they get triggered or they become transparent so now for example the flops which i have used over here this flop this flop and this one these are all edge triggered flop they will become transparent on the edge of the clock pulse okay and this latch it's it's called a transparent latch and this latch will become transparent only at the level of the clock signal so whenever this latch sees a level of course the internal circuitry is is different from this one and this one i'll talk about the mosfet level uh, uh, mosfet level description of latch and the flop in a separate course in this for 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 now we'll we'll try to understand that the latch behaves latch works or latch functions on the level of the clock signal whereas the launch flop behaves on 
on the edge of the clock signal or it becomes transparent at the edge of the clock signal okay so in in this kind of circuitry what we can do let's say if the if the flop if there's a timing path from flop to latch and which is which is being not met so the flop can actually borrow some time from this area of the latch okay that's called as time borrowing and again if there is a path from timing path from latch to the flop which is not being met the latch can actually give some time from this area it's called time given to the start point so this some amount of time from its transparent from its level uh, level edge it can it can provide that to the to the capturing flop so that is always possible that's why, that's why latches are uh, becomes really important in today's in today's uh, vlsi circuit so we will talk about more about latches and its applications basically most of the pipelining is being done using latches we'll talk more about applications of latch and, and applications of latch timing as we go further in the course but this this becomes there are there are two timing paths that comes when you introduce a latch between two flops one is from this point to this point where the flop actually borrows some time from the latch and one there is another timing path that comes from latch to the flop where the latch actually gives some time to the flip flop okay so this kind of timing is referred to as latch as a latch setup and hold analysis and we will we will be getting familiar with the terms of time borrowing and time given to the start point and to the end point so th these are the these are the ones that i will be covering in this in this course so as and when we move along the course this terms will become more familiar okay so along with the setup and hold analysis along with the reg to reg checks the, the flop to flop checks there are some other kinds of analysis a timing analysis that we do once we once we enter into an sta world so those are called as this one of them are called as slew and transition analysis so once you enter into the slew and transition analysis these are basically the checks that ensures that at any point on the circuit your slew or your transition is 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 covering between a certain min and max value it's is it is between certain range so there is a there will be some min requirement there will be some minimum requirement of the slew there will be some maximum requirement requirement of the slew and or the transition the the slew and the transition analysis ensures that the each and every point on this particular circuit meets that criteria and there are reasons for that there are power related reasons for that basically if you if the slew is too sharp it will increase your short circuit power and if it is too large it will again increase your it will increase the opening time for which your gate is turned on i'll i'll talk more about the slew and the transition analysis in detail when we go further in the course so this will also be a part of our of our course so for what we'll do we'll, we'll stop at this point as i need some more time to discuss the slew and the transition for data as well as clock path we'll stop at this point and we'll start from the slew and the transition analysis checks that we'll be doing in a circuitry from the next video thank you